Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another fun and exciting episode on the best channel on youtube.com that teaches iOS and Swift development. Yes, you heard that right. This is the best channel on the gosh darn internet. I uh, hope you're having a fantastic morning or afternoon. In today's video, what I would like to do is to finally wrap up on our number pad application right over here. In the last episode, I showed you how to render out this header at the very top that contains a very small label. Whenever you click on your keys here, the label text is going to change just like so. In this video, let me show you also how to render out this last row of buttons all the way at the bottom that contains this backspace button here that allows you to you know, remove the text at the very top here. So this feature is a little bit tricky to build out, so I'll try to walk you through this uh, one step at a time here. Now let's kind of go back into our Xcode project. You have your view controller that is rendering out all of your buttons. In the middle here, let me just run this code to make sure I'm exactly where I need to be. And here we go, one, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to go down somewhere down here. We are going to render out a completely new section that contains these two buttons here. So the way that you do this is to make use of this method, a number of items in section. You can provide another method. So let's say number of sections in collection view, return a value of two. Uh, if you run this guy, you'll see two sections that look exactly the same, I believe. But obviously this is not going to compile because we don't have the override here. You know, just provide the override and the app should be up and running. Again, I am on a very powerful Hackintosh machine. That's why everything is working really, really quickly. So here we go. We have two sections like this, so one, two, three, and you'll see everything is kind of reflected the same in both of these sections here. Uh, the trick to fixing this guy so that you don't see the same thing down here is to go down below in number of items in section. Currently, we're returning a number of uh, numbers dot count for the number of items. And instead of doing this, why don't we check the section if it's equal to the second section. So we have section zero up here and section one down below. For the second section, why don't we just return a value of one? And I think that should be okay. Uh, I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the iPhone. I access Max Simulator, obviously, and we'll see that at the very bottom here, we have a one button that looks like the one down below. All right, so that's the first thing that you have to modify inside of your application. And the next thing is to kind of remove this header that's appearing right here, one, one, one. Don't exactly want to see that in my second section. So the trick to getting this to work is to go back into a reference size for header in section, which is this method that I'm highlighting here. So uh, down below 49, we are declaring the height to be 20% of the entire application's height using this calculation. We are going to check the good old section here. So let's see. Let's see if section is equal to one. We are simply going to return the size of zero. So dot zero, it's automatically able to reference or inference what this size is by just using zero right here because we're returning CG size. And once you do that, you see that the header that we had before is now completely gone. And whenever you punch these buttons here, you see nothing appears at the very bottom there. So that's you know how you eliminate the header for the second section. Now the final thing we need to do is to swap out this one cell for this green button cell here and also render out this backspace button on the right side. So the way to actually do this is to make sure you go back into view to load up here. We are registering a key cell, so why don't we register a different cell as well, collection view, uh, register a different cell using a, let's see, green call button cell, whatever you wanna call this guy. And this identifier here will declare another one. So file, private, let, uh, green button cell ID, so cell ID equals some kind of string on the right side, doesn't matter so much, just put something in here, you should be fine. So put that as the cell ID. And now we need to create this green call button cell. So right over here, a uh, new file, let's go ahead and create this sucker. This guy will be a green call button cell. And here we go, let's import UI kit here create a new class, create our cell, UI collection view cell. 
are you going to come out for me? Nope. So UI, collection, view, cell, Xcode, I find to be extremely buggy. And uh, that's just, I guess, what we have to deal with. Let's override super init frame required and fatal. And here we go. We are going to now use a background color. And I'm going to try to use a color, color literal. That's how you say that word. Uh, color literal, click on the other. I'm going to pick this color here. I noticed this doesn't always work correctly. So let's see if that is going to give me that color and looks like it's working for me. Must be my lucky day. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, override layout subviews to give this guy a rounded radius. So super layout subviews, uh, layer corner radius equals view frame dot width and over two. I don't think you need the view here. So just remove that, should be okay. All right, green call button cell is now going to be used as our second cell that we register here. You can build your project. Everything looks a-okay now if you run your code. Uh, again, my awesome Hackintosh machine is super fast, so that's kind of why uh, things load up very quickly. If you're curious about my Hackintosh build, you can find all the parts in the description below. Uh, they're all linking to Amazon, and if you buy any of the parts, it does give me a little bit of cash to work with, so that's a nice little thing about Amazon. But anyhow, Let's kind of go ahead and fix this one cell down here so that we get this green button. And the easiest way of doing this is to head into one of these really long methods, a uh, cell for item at. And currently we are dequeuing all of these key cells. That's why they're appearing as gray. Uh, one quick way to fix this is to make sure that if the index path that section, if this is the second section, so again, everything is kind of zero based with uh, programming. So section, the first section up here is uh, section zero. And at this bottom is section one, obviously. Uh, so down here, if we are in the second section, we are going to say, let uh, green button cell equals collection view dqr cell using a identifier. And this will be the green button cell ID and index path, just like that. You can cast this into the green button cell if you want to. I don't think I need it, but I'll just leave the code as is. And finally, let's return this green button cell like that. Okay, now I can run my code. I believe everything looks correct, but uh, we'll see what happens inside of our exciting, exciting iPhone XS Max Simulator. All right, so here we go. We have our green cell now showing up. Uh, if you want to render it with some kind of phone button, you can go back to your cell here and you know create some kind of image view, UI image view. Uh, let's pop in an image literal right here and let's go inside of our assets to actually import this as an icon and I believe I have both of my assets that I need so let's import both of these bad boys. We have the backspace button that looks like that and also the screen phone icon. I believe that's what that's called and let's go back to view controller or a green call button cell rather and double click on this guy make sure we get something so i believe it's that on the right side so you can't see your white png files which i find to be really stupid but that's how the xcode programmers decided to do things all right so let's kind of get that out of the way and now i'm going to add this image view inside of my green call button cell uh, nothing too bad about this guy so image view uh, center in super so super view with the size here and it with our size of 40 and 40 I know I'm doing this rather quickly, but you know, I don't really like typing out a lot of layout code and this comes from the extension over here. It makes your life a lot easier. So I do suggest using this whenever possible. Uh, you see the icon is a little wonky and kind of has this weird image ratio. So one easy way of fixing this is to use content mode. So content mode, uh, make this bad boy to scale aspect fit. I think scale aspect fill works as well, but I think fit is a better option. So once you do that, your icon looks a lot better and closer to what we need on this side here. All right, so now that we have this wonderful green icon showing up, we are going to go back into the view controller and we're gonna fix the left spacing here so that we can shift it over to the middle. And the way to do this is to go into the inset method. So you can go in here and just type in inset add and somewhere right below, so inset for section add. Uh, here is a lot of math in the green. I'll just remove that. And here is the basic math that 
Now it helps you calculate how much padding is on the left side here and also the right side, right? So left, right padding is this calculation. Uh, instead of using that, we are going to check for if this section is equal, equal to the you know second section. Again, it's this bottom guy here. We are going to do something a little bit different. So, you know, you can return any value that you want. So in its top, left, bottom, and right. This guy, we are going to use zero and let's say 100, zero and 100 maybe. And uh, let's just see what this looks like. I always do a lot of testing with just random arbitrary values, you know, just to confirm that things are appearing as I expect. And here we go, 100 for this little spacing on this left side here is appearing this wide. I guess the right side doesn't really matter, but uh, this is what 100 is going to give us. And the last thing to do is to, you know, perform a little bit of math again to figure out how much space we need to push this guy all the way to the right, somewhere right here. So along this edge is what I need. And the magical math is this here. So left padding. And we are going to use view. Let's see, let me just type out the math here. View frame width uh, minus, let's see, what is the width of this cell over here, right? So I actually want to divide it by, let's see, I want to take the entire width minus the width of this thing and divide it by two. I should be able to get somewhere right here. So the question is, what exactly is my, let's see, cell width is equal to something, and I need to minus the cell width here, and then divide it by two, and then use this as the left padding. So that's kind of what I want, but right now I don't have the width of this cell here, so can't figure out exactly what this math is. Uh, the way to actually fix this is to use the calculation somewhere right here. So let me just copy this. And let me paste that in here and I will try to run this. I think I can compile this correctly. Uh, looks good, looks good. I'm gonna try to run my code again. I noticed that every time you have some weird calculation inside of the math here, the compilation can appear a little slow, but uh, that's kind of what I get. Now the math right here doesn't look perfect, so let me try a couple of things. Let me remove the cell width and try to run this. I want to see what I am going to get with just the uh, view frame width divided by two. It should place the cell somewhere on the left edge here. I think that this right over here is probably messing with the calculation, so let me remove that and try to run this one more time. I think I'm going to get pretty close to what I need now, so let's run this guy and just wait for it to compile. We should be okay. Looks like this guy is not appearing in the right location, so what you can do is to subtract a little bit more from this guy. Let's try to subtract 100 from the left padding. And I hope to actually get some spacing on the left side uh, to kind of reduce. So let me do that. And that looks okay. I am going to subtract, let's see, cell width divided by two. I think that's what I need. And I'm not exactly sure what the problem with the math is just yet, but I'll try to run this again and we should be a-okay. So that looks okay, looks good to me. And uh, finally, what I'd like to do is to kind of clean up the math here and also here. Uh, you see, we are calculating the cell for, or the cell size using size for item and all of this math here. We just copy and pasted a lot of this code, which is never a good idea. So let me show you a quick way of fixing this right here. So let's kind of cut this code and I will paste it right here. So paste that. We get our left right padding to be a local variable as well as the inner spacing and cell width. But you can't really do this because whenever you're uh, accessing a variable on the actual controller, you are going to need a lazy var instead. So lazy var, it makes this possible. It also makes this down here possible as well. And this guy is also dependent on a self variable. So you just wanna make sure to use a lazy var here. Uh, the main reason why this doesn't work without the lazy var is because uh, these variables right here are now being created after their, after the entire controller, which means that view is now something that's accessible. Uh, minor detail, but make sure you have your lazy var, and uh, you should have code that compiles correctly. Uh, now that we've refactored these three variables outside, we can remove this down here as well, and everything should be fine. So. 
Now we're just now accessing these guys inside of these two methods of here and also down here. And I'll try to run this again. We should be okay. And looks good. All right, so quite a bit of math, but I think we're finally ready to render out this backspace button here that allows us to remove these keys that we press on. So backspace just like that. Uh, the way to do this is very similar to the screen button. And what I'll do is create another cell that is gonna hold that image here. So so with file, I'm going to call this the backspace cell. Call it whatever you want, but this is the name that I'll give it. Uh, this guy, let's import UI kit here, class backspace cell. And this will be a UI collection view cell like so. All right, now I don't really want to type all this code, so let me just copy all this here. I know this should work somewhat correctly. Uh, I don't think I need a background color, and instead of the other image, let me just replace this with that guy here. And that's pretty much my backspace cell, has an image view added and centered somewhere in the middle there. Uh, let's go ahead and register this cell inside of our view controller. Uh, we are going to kind of repeat the same exercise that we did earlier. So collection, uh, collection view, uh, register, and let's say dot self. And looks like Xcode is a little bit problematic right now. So let me just copy all this code here and just comma and paste that. Looks okay. This is going to be my backspace cell ID. And I'll copy this. And finally, all the way up here, let's create a third cell ID. So in private, let that equals all of that. And we should be okay. Let me try to build now. The code is going to compile, but I notice my syntax highlighting is kind of gone. So let me try to go back here and hopefully it's going to come back. I'm going to run my code one more time. And what I'll do is for the second section instead of cell for item at, which is this method here, uh, instead of the second section, I'm going to check the let's see, index path dot item. If this is equal to the very first cell, then I'm going to use the green cell. Otherwise, if it's the second slot right here, so if this is zero and this is going to be one, we are going to use an else case here. And I'm going to return the backspace cell. But before I do that, I would like to get my code to actually come back with the autocomplete. So I notice that sometimes when the collection view, when I type that, I should get the autocomplete. So that looks kind of okay. So collection view. I feel like something is wrong with the compiler, but I guess I'll just let it be for now. So backspace cell equals collection, uh, collection view. And let's see, DQ. Let's hope this guy comes out pretty soon for us. And then we'll get this guy here. Uh, backspace cell ID is what I want. And let's see, backspace cell ID and index path like so. This guy is the, let's see, backspace, backspace cell. And let's get, and finally, let me just return this uh, backspace cell like that. And we can try to run again, but I don't think we'll see that cell just yet. Uh, let's see, we have this method here called number of items in section. For the second section, we're only returning one. So that's kind of the problem. If I make this to be uh, the value of two, so second section will return two cells instead of just the one there. And that way it's going to actually enter this uh, method call. So backspace cell is now appearing kind of like so. Now, one strange thing that I notice here is that the backspace cell isn't correctly aligned vertically with all these buttons here. So I would like to try to figure out why that's happening here. So let's say background color of our backspace cell is red. Let me try to run this to see exactly where this cell is landing in terms of my collection view. So that's kind of what we see here. That doesn't look all that great. So let me try to go back to our view controller. There's a method down here called uh, inset for section at. Let me see if I can do something about this guy. So I would like to use this instead. So why don't I say uh, self dot left right padding, try to compile and try to run. It should be okay. Let's kind of see if it actually works inside of the simulator. And what that looks like is this right here, which is shifted to the right a little bit. Uh, not exactly sure why that's happening, but I guess I'll just leave it for now. Let me kind of remove this red color here. So let's remove the red color. And I try to run this again. 
And the last thing I would like to show you how to do is whenever you tap on this backspace button here, right, you should really remove this guy over here. So basically it should remove the six, five, and four. But instead what's happening is we're adding a value of two inside of the text at the top. Uh, the reason why that's happening is because inside of the did select at method, so where are you? Inside of did select item add, every time we tap on one of these cells, we're just adding the value at the very top here. And this guy appears to be, let's say, number index path to item. The item right here is actually zero, 01, so it's trying to add this two value up here. So obviously that's not what we want. And instead, why don't I show you the correct code? Uh, let's go if index path, so index path dot item, if this is equal to one, and also if the index path dot section is also equal to one, then we know we're hitting this backspace button here. So this is the backspace uh, index path. And then finally, we can just simply Make sure to say dialed uh, numbers display string. And we're going to use this right here. So dialed number display string. So let's just click this guy up here. And I believe there's a method called drop last on this guy. And it's basically going to drop the last character of the string. You can try to build this, but I don't think this compiles just yet. This guy is a substring, so it'll tell you to fix it by wrapping it inside of a string like so. And I believe I want to use an else here, grab this guy, cut that, paste that in here, and I should be fine. Uh, I'll try to run this one last time, and we should get the backspace working correctly. So one, two, three, hit the backspace, one, two, and let's see, nine, eight, seven, six, pound star. And let's hit the backspace one more time like that. I'm not sure if this does anything. This actually does the one, so that's not great. Uh, one thing that you can do to fix this is to make sure you're inside of the, so if index path dot section, if this is the first section, then we'll check if index path dot, so index path dot item, if this is one, then we'll perform this code here. So let's just perform that. And then I will use the else case down here. So that should fix the problem with the actual call button down here. Uh, let's just confirm this and this should wrap it up for today's video. We are going to click on that and nothing happens. One, two, three, backspace, backspace, and click on that. Everything looks A-OK -okay right now. So click that and let's get. Alrighty everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for this entire series on how to build out the number pad screen for the phone call application on your iPhone devices. I still don't know exactly why this button is not aligned vertically like so, but I'll find the solution and I'll include it in the source code download below. If you're interested in learning more about Swift and iOS development, make sure to check out all the courses down in the description below as well. And I'll see you in the next lesson. If you have any requests about anything that you want to see me build out, make sure to hit me up at build that app on Twitter and also leave a screenshot inside of your messages. That's going to be it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.